to Laddie's Garage for episode 8 of the Turbo SS build. On this episode we're going to look at installing or upgrading the oil coolers for both the transmission and the power steering. Now we'll talk about the transmission first and why we would install a better oil cooler and, and I can promise you the number one reason why an automatic transmission will will melt down or destroy itself is over temperature. So keeping those transmission temps down is one of the major reasons to to keep your automatic transmission living and, and happy. And obviously one of the first upgrades would definitely be a nice aluminium style cooler across the front of the front of the car, get nice airflow, help cool that transmission fluid down. From factory the automatic cars they actually send the transmission fluid up through the end tank of the radiator. Now I'll show you the factory radiator in a minute and we can have a look at how it goes through there. And another way we can actually reduce temperatures of the transmission too is a nice finned aluminium pan so the airflow underneath the car can actually flow past the oil pan and help reduce temperatures too. And another one is actually how you drive it and how much you abuse it. Obviously uh, having a gauge for transmission temp will probably help you keep an eye on it but just you know, respecting the gearbox and taking care of it a bit will also make the, the life of the transmission a lot longer. So what we might do is I'll just head outside and we'll have a look at the, the standard setup for the transmission cooler and then uh, yeah we'll take it from there. Okay this is a, a standard automatic style radiator for the, the VZ V8 Commodore and you can see over on the side here these two fittings and this is where from the factory they pump the transmission fluid up into the end tank and then there's a little cooler element something like that inside that end tank which gets cooled by the, the water temperature and you can sort of see inside there you've got the fins and what have you now like I was saying from the from the factory this would probably be alright because you know factory cars aren't designed to have high horsepower and, and stall converters now stall converter will always raise the temperature of your oil temperature because there's a percentage of slip there and that slip definitely produces temperature or oil temperature so this factory setup will not do uh, you know the coolest that the oil can ever be really would be the same temperature as the water temp so you know I'd, I'd, it's just common knowledge that that's just not good enough so you could just leave these fittings off and not even worry about them but I'm lucky enough that I actually have a, a manual version of the same radiator and out of a manual car you can see the radiator is different, it has no oil cooler in there so there will be no intrusion in that end tank, no space taken up so this will have a tiny bit more capacity and you know I've got it there so why not use it so that's the factory style cooler for the transmission uh, I suppose the next thing we'll talk about is the power steering Alright guys, now for power steering. Now, even from the factory, I don't know if you've ever had one of these cars, but in, you know, car parks on a really hot summer's day and you've got to turn the wheel heaps, you'll actually notice the power steering starting to whine, even on a standard car. Well, I've noticed it. So, the factory style cooler, which we will have a look at, is probably just doing its job just enough in a standard car. Now, if you have a look, I'm over at the tunnel, we'll have a look. If you go and jam a turbo exhaust housing right next to the power steering pump, obviously that power steering pump is going to get hotter. Now even on the tunner, having this pretty silly reservoir made out of aluminium actually makes it even worse again. So I actually have problems with power steering wine, especially in traffic once, it, once the under engine bay temps go through the roof of it whining like crazy. And I actually only have the standard style cooler power steering cooler in this and I know for a fact that it's it's definitely not good enough so I'll actually you can't really see it so I'll go back over the SS the standard cooler is still in there and um, we'll have a look at it all right back at the SS you can actually see down in the bottom there turn the light on these are the power steering lines here and it pumped around and up through this it's aluminium, it's just an aluminium tube, aluminium hard line and they've got these coils wrapped around it. Now the airflow coming from the front would pass through this and definitely help cool it a little bit but just not quite enough. 
So we actually take all this out and we'll replace it with a proper little oil cooler, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Now, same as the tonne of the setup here for the turbo, it's an even bigger turbo. It's going to be making even more power, so I'm guessing an even more temperature right here next to the power steering pump. So my predictions will be hot power steering fluid, and that's, that's one of the main reasons why I'm going to put an upgraded oil cooler in it. So, yeah, we'll get amongst that soon. Let's have a look at what I've replaced it with. Oh, I've got the parts laid out on the bench here so we can have a look at what we're going to be using today. Now these are the actual coolers. Uh, I've gone for PWR, of course. As far as cooling anything goes, I'm pretty sure that PWR would be the best in the business. So the way I figure it is, I've got limited room in the front of this car, so I'm going to want to use the biggest that I can get to fit but the best brand so I can get the most efficient cooling. Now the difference between something Chinese and PWR I, I feel is not that much different. You do pay a little bit more but I really do think it's worth it. Also one of the main reasons would definitely be made in Australia. Try and support that as much as we can I reckon. So this is the transmission one. It's a 250 by 280 mil cooler and I've got the Dash 6AN fittings on the bottom of this one. You can get these coolers with barbs, dash 8, dash 6, you know the options there are endless. So that'll be for the transmission. The reason why it's dash 6 is because I have fittings on the Turbo 400 which we'll have a look in a minute that are also dash 6. So you know pre-planning your parts making sure stuff like that matches up makes life a lot easier. Now moving on this is going to be my power steering cooler obviously a lot better capacity and a lot better flow also PWR and it has 3 8 barbs on it and it's 110 by 280 now I've got the 3 8 barb because it uses a 3 8 hose so once again plan it get your stuff sorted so it makes your life easy now also we have obviously some dash 6 line braided line I like to use braided line when running the lines down the car it's going to go down the chassis rail and it's actually going to go in the inner wheel well so having that stainless steel webbing around the outside of the actual rubber gives it that added protection from any damage and getting any leaks so no brainer there black braid I've got some Aeroflow P clamps and some Aeroflow Dash 6 fittings to make these lines up with the P clamps are obviously to hold the hose we're going to screw them in with some little some little self tappers to the chassis rail and run the lines, we'll go through that and also I have a dipstick there ready, we'll probably throw that in too now once again all this stuff, I've gone down to the boys down at Advanced Motorsport and you know I've plugged them before in another video but really I've actually met another fella down there now, his name's Cormac and what a champion you know, these blokes down there you know just just great bunch of blokes, I highly recommend Advanced Motorsport and I was actually, I was actually lucky enough they bloody, they hooked me up with this mad shirt. So thanks heaps to the boys down at Advanced Motorsport. Yeah, keep up the good work, love it. So enough of this, let's um, have a look at the SS and get under there and have a look at the Turbo 400 and where these lines hook up and make a little bit of a plan on how we're going to mount it and run the lines. Okay, we're down on the ground on the right hand side of the car. Obviously the right hand side front brake road. I've taken the wheel off so we can get in here and have a good look. We'll get up in here, and you can see on the front of that Turbo 400, my two dash six lines for the transmission oil coolers lines. Now, we're going to take that black braided line I showed you, the straight dash six AN fittings, and come straight off of there, and then come straight up here, straight into here around this chassis rail. We'll move that light. I'm going to wrap them up around here on the inside of the well using the P-clamps to secure it all and run the lines ac across the chassis rail here straight across here around the front wrap them around the front here and then we'll make up some brackets and stuff to, to mount the coolers up under the front here now just so we know exactly how much room we've actually got I am going to slide the the radiator in with the air conditioner condenser because I am keeping air conditioner in this car 
and so I can see how much room I've got. And I will go through and remove the factory cooler line. It's just a couple of clamps. There's a little 8mm little steel P clamp there. Take these couple of straps out and remove all this plastic, which is just clips. It's pretty self-explanatory stuff. This big front bar air dam thing, once I get the intercooler in there, there's absolutely no way that can stay there, so I'll take that off now as well. Also the bottom plastic cover here, another cover that I don't worry about, I'll take that off as well. Clean all this up and throw that radiator in. We'll have a look at what I just took off, so you have a rough idea if you want to tackle it yourself. First thing I took off was this bottom bottom lip, it sits under the bottom, there's four, four of these little clips you just got to pull out, if they're threaded just get your cutters under there and hold that and just lever them out. It's four of them. Then the air dam had to come off the bottom of the Rio bar, I think they call it. That was only held on by these two little clips under here, one each corner, into these holes, or actually them holes. So it was just a matter of popping them out, and that was just clipped onto the bottom of the radiator support, so that came out easy. I actually took the Rio bar out to open it up to have a plenty more room to work in there, that's for sure. And there's three 13mm bolts both sides to get that off. This will go back in, but more than likely it will have a huge cutout in it for the intercooler later on. But I do like to put as much of that back in as possible. I am going to be trying to run a 100mm thick intercooler in the front of this car, so yeah, I dare say a lot of that might be gone, but in the future I will be putting this back in, as well as the twin horns, keep all that stuff working. And this is the factory power steering cooler with its little straps. It was just uh, four Phillips head screws in there, just two into the radiator, bottom radiator support and two into the top radiator support. And then there was a little P clip clip there that was screwed in as well for a little self tapper. Self tapper from standard so that's pretty funny. Little, little oil cooler lines that run over to the hard lines in the engine bay and then this was just slipped onto the bottom of the radiator support. So all that out and that opens us up to have a good look at where these coolers are going to go. Now I've already slid the, the radiator in and the air conditioner condenser. It's, it has the dryer mounted to it so you can get a good look at you know where we need to mount it and the size of the coolers that I've chosen. Now the intercooler is obviously going to be in front of here so the width of that, if you can see the distance that comes out, just get a good angle on it, you can't really see it but the distance that this comes out, we cannot have these coolers coming out any further than that. And that is pretty well in line with the, the front lip of this radiator support. So that's roughly where the inner cooler, where the sorry, oil cooler is going to sit. It's going to sit up a little bit. Both of them will sit up. And there will be definitely like maybe 25mm, 30mm of gap between the back of these oil coolers and the air conditioner condenser. I think that little air gap is key when getting all the coolers to work together in line. I think sandwiching them up against each other, you can get the mounts that come through the through the radiator grills. I think that just it just starts stacking it too thick and the air starts to struggle. I think having a little gap helps just from what I've played with in the past and what other people have told me. So roughly that's where they're gonna sit. You can see they sit in there nice, straight AN fitting there. I'll probably end up notching a little bit of this radiator support out so that oil cooler line can go straight around there. This one's got a 90 on it, it'll come down and around. Probably zip tie to that one and go around there as well. The power steering lines, that'll probably just coil down and around and run along the bottom and over into the hard lines. And this one here will probably have to do some sort of a spiral and do the same thing. So, you can roughly see how the oil lines are going to run, roughly see where they're going to fit. And the next step will be to make some some brackets, similar to the standard ones, but I'm going to use a bit of this looks like 10 or 12 mil by 2 or 3 mil aluminium flat bar and I'm just going to make three of them, just bend a little angle on the bottom come up, another little angle and screw into the bottom of the top radiator support screw down into the bottom radiator support and have three of them, one, two, three and that should mount those oil coolers in there just nice so what I'll do is I'll make one of them up, play around, get the measurements right so I know exactly what I'm doing and then I'll show you how I make one of them brackets and yeah we'll get all this mounted up. Okay guys I got the first bracket made up, put in so I know what I'm doing. Now it's to make two more. You can see I've just 
that light's pretty bright. I've just self-tapped the bottom of the bracket into the radio support, bent up a little bit of this aluminium and self-tapped it under the top radio support there. And there's going to be three of them. Obviously this is going to be the middle one and that'll take the middle run of the coolers and then there'll be one this side and one that side. So we'll head over to the bench and I'll just quickly show you how I bent this up. Alright guys, here's the second bracket that I've already made. It's just a matter of duplicating the same thing. All I did is got a bit of that flat. Measured how much I needed, plus a little bit extra each side. You can always trim off the legs after you finish, so you want to definitely make it a little bit longer than what you need. So, made them a bit longer. The first tab that I needed, I need 50 mil. Simply measured 50 mil, marked it. Then I've got this little bench vise here with a little little flat edge. Pretty simple. Whack it in there on the flat edge. Tighten it up. Bend it round. Cold bend. Up on its edge. Give it a bit of a smack down with the hammer. Gives you a nice bend. Pretty easy. Now the only because we have to two, do this between two two set members, you have to take the thickness of the material off the next measurement. So I needed 365 between, so you've got to take the thickness off to allow for the bend. That's the only real tip that I have for you. So I just measure 362, take about 3 mil off, mark it again. And then same deal, back into the little bench vise, on the mark, nice and tight, bend it round, give it a smack, seriously that easy, so that's the third one, now I'll go through and mark them out and mount these, all three of them in a row, in a row and I'll show you how we go about it. Okay, I got all them three brackets in and managed to, I just ended up screwing the, the coolers to the straps that I made, the brackets. The only thing that did really change is this top one up in here, you can see it. I had to put a, a bit of a funky bend on it because the top radio support changed shape. Still the same size, just had to put a little bend in it, but it turned out quite well. You can see over the top here, plenty of gap down the back of the coolers between the radiator condenser, let that airflow get in amongst there. And you can see that the that top line is going to 90 off there and come down and around and this, this line here is going to come straight out. So you can see where I've marked out where I'm going to cut out that black line so it gives it a free path to wrap around for those trendy lines. So I'll cut all that out and then we'll look at making up these lines and getting them all fit in. Alright, you can see where I just clearanced that that lower radio support so that these braided lines can come straight through there and have a nice straight run. If they were outside, out around the outside, it would be a sharp edge for it to rub against, which is no good. So that'll allow me to go straight through there and probably put a P clamp on the front there nicely. And then this one will come down around and maybe put another P clamp there. So that's sweet. We'll look at making those lines up now and uh, running them from the auto. Okay, the next step is to get some of this braided line sorted for the transmission cooler. Make up some of these lines with these AN fittings. Now this is Dash 6 AN style, and it's Dash 6 style braided line and it's actually the fabric, it's like fabric covered. It's not the hard steel covered stuff which I actually reckon this is better, especially for making these lines. After practicing on this one, it's the easiest one I've ever made. First time I've ever used this fabric covered stuff. It's still got the stainless steel wire in there, but it's covered with this nice fabric stuff. So, I'll cut the end off this and show you how to do a cut as well. First thing I like to do is to cut it is you've got to wrap some electrical tape around where you're going to cut it. Now, I'm just going to put this fitting on the end. So you just wrap the tape around there relatively tight just to stop it from fraying because when you throw the grinder through it, it's going to want to fray. 
So a couple of, couple of laps with a bit of, bit of tape. Then I'll just grab the angle grinder and actually cut through the center of the tape. Okay, nice clean cut. There's a little bit of rubber in there. Make sure you get that out. Just flick all the rubber out of the inside of it there. Then you can actually unwrap the tape. It's just the, the, the circular motion of the cut is what makes the, the braid fray out like crazy. So being able to tape it in there gives you a super nice, clean, non-frayed cut. Just like that. Right, now we have the fitting. You undo the, I would call it the cutter part of the fitting. And the, you can see where the hose pushes onto. But in this, in the nut part of it, inside here, there's actually a, a coarse thread. I know you probably can't see it, but there's a coarse thread inside there. And that actually grips the outside of the braid. So you actually push it on and turn it so that the outside of this nut actually grips into the grips into the braid and that's where it gets a lot of its strength from you just push and turn until let me show you but until that hose is just bottomed out to the bottom of the threads in there it's pretty hard for me to show you on the camera but yeah you turn it you turn it on until it bottoms out there then I like to put a little bit of WD on the you could even use a little bit of oil, bit of dub D on the hose, a bit on the end of the the nose. I suppose it's going to slide into the hose as well, and that just makes putting the whole fitting together so much easier. So you push it inside, and you just get that thread started. Do it as far as you can with your fingers, which I've reached that point, and then I've got this. I don't have AN fitting, so I've got a bit of a janky setup, but. It does the job. I just like to put a shifter in my little portable bench vice and I'll come up with it. So at least that way it holds it for me. And I can put that fitting in the shifter and concentrate my other, sh other shifter on the fitting and just simply wind it together. It's just, it's just a lot easier than trying to hold two shifters, that's for sure. You'll feel it starting to get tight. And that's it. Simple as that. Do it up till it's tight, and there's your AN fitting, ready, ready to bolt onto the box. So we'll go over now and screw these onto the dash six fittings that are coming out of the gearbox. Alright we're back under the car and I've already got the top line on. It's just a matter of screwing it onto these fittings. Okay guys, bit of a light change but I've also got the second braided line on. The AN fitting nice and done up and I've run them over towards the chassis rail here and I've already put a couple of them P clamps in, isolated P clamps. Now the plan is to run the lines over here out of the way because in this gap here next to the in this hole here that's where the exhaust comes through so we need to tuck that up out of the way now we could have run the lines in the inside of the chassis rail but I just worry that it gets too close to the exhaust and being a turbo setup the exhaust actually runs quite a bit hotter than what it normally would be so ducking them out here out to the inner guard in a wheel well for me would seem like the best option so first two p-clamps are in and we're on our way over there so I'll uh, get set up in the inner guard there the wheel well and show you what we're up to okay we're back here on the inner guard on the right hand side those two p-clamps that I've shown you before these ones here so you can see we've wrapped up around and I'll put a couple more in ran them straight along and then put another couple more in so give you a bit of a look at how they're being run. You can see down in around there, I've got a little bit of slack on them lines so there's a bit of room for movement. And yeah, they wrap up and around. Now we can go and work on the front. Alright, 
right, now we're at the front. Hopefully we can see, trying to get some decent light set up here. Well, you can see I've got the AN fittings a straight on the bottom and I've actually gone and put a 90 on the top and that's so I can wrap these lines around this front corner and then run one up to the 90 and one straight to that fitting there and if you remember we cut this little section out here so that these lines had a nice straight run now also you might notice that when I put the fittings on the other end this end obviously hasn't been cut yet, I find that to be the easiest way, so that way you know you can just hold it exactly one at the bottom line exactly where you need it. Hold it there, put a mark or even just wrap the tape around it straight away where you're gonna cut it, and then that'll free up the top one, and then you can mark the top one. It's just because they're two different length lines, instead of trying to gin around find the right length and doing unnecessary cuts, I find just doing one end and leaving one end looped. It's just the easiest way. So what I'll do is I'll shimmy around with this and get them lined up and tape them and mark them and we'll, we'll get these fittings on. Okay, you can see those lines I've finished up. Ended up putting a couple of P-clamps in the front here to hold them. And also just another tip, when tightening these AN fittings onto your oil cooler, you can see that they give you a an allocation to put a shifter or a spanner that's to hold it you don't want to go trying to tighten that AN fitting without supporting the cooler as well because these are only lightly soldered in if you go wrenching on the on the fittings it's more than likely you'll end up cracking the top here cracking the bottom so make sure you put a second shifter or a second spanner on the cooler as well when you go tightening it so the oil lines for the transmission are done uh, we'll move on to the the power steering cooler lines shortly. I'll just give you another quick look, move this light around. They wrap up around the bottom here. You can see where they just take off down the chassis rail there. It's kind of hard. It is night time at the moment, so I do apologise if it's terrible light. But yeah, sort of, you can see where I run the lines. Also, another thing is I've got the bottom line coming out of the bottom bottom uh, port of the transmission. Now that's the oil coming out of the transmission. So the oil will come out of the transmission, come up and fill this from the bottom up. So this cooler will stay full of oil. If you fill it from the top down, I find that it'll probably dribble down and it's not absolutely chockers full. So I always like to fill it from the bottom up. So keep that in mind as well. All right, we'll move on to the power steering lines now. I mean, sitting here, having a look, looking at my options, and I've come up with a bit of a plan. I'll show you the, in the back here, the line, the hard line, I don't know if you can see it, oh yeah, comes out of the power steering, out of the steering box, sorry, comes along here, up, and kicks out here, and then after it comes through the factory cooler out the front, it comes back and taps into this line here. Now, what, I, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually take this standard line out, I don't see the point in the oil lines coming across the front through the cooler then one side going back. So what I'm going to do is come in one side, go into the cooler and then come out the other side and, and go back over so that I'm not doubling back. So I just got some 3 8 just normal rubber transmission oil cooler line. Remember power steering fluid is the same as transmission fluid so that line is rated to do it. And I might move the light, but there's actually some room just under the under the bottom here. I poke this hose through, so there's enough room both sides. This one here will sneak in next to that air conditioner line there, and that one there will come out there. So we'll come out off the hard line that comes from the steering steering box. Come up, we we'll have to come around here and do a little bit of a coil in around the back here like this. I'm going to put it behind so that I can fill that oil cooler from the bottom up because I like to fill it from the bottom up. It comes out of the steering steering box, fills it up, then returns back through there up to the reservoir, which is here. So the, this line will probably run along the chassis line rail there and pretty much meet up to the same point as where it comes up here. You can see where this line comes there. So it's just a matter of maybe even putting a P-clamp in on the inside of the chassis there and pretty much coming back, coming back up exactly the same spot. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take that line out 
get rid of all that. Probably take this radiator out so I can run run this line behind and get all that tidied up and I'll do a bit and we'll catch back up. Okay, I've got that, that feed all sorted out. You can see I've had to coil it up. I used a couple of P-clamps to hold that hose in there nice and tight so it doesn't go flapping around. You know, I probably could have used zip ties but you know, why not try your hardest and make it as tidy as possible. It's not that much effort. Probably also notice I changed all these. I used self tappers originally. I changed them all to little nuts and bolts. And it coils around the end of the radiator end tank there and clamps back into the factory hard line. So that looks nice and tidy. I much prefer the little bolts. And I didn't coil this too hard either, so the P clamps up a little bit high here, give this a nice smooth run, and that will fill the oil from the bottom up. So that looks pretty good. Now to go from the oil cooler up to the reservoir, just another piece of hose. I haven't finished this one, I've just sort of poked it in, getting a bit of an idea what I'm going to do. Uh, it's going to go around the other end of the end tank, where this air conditioner line goes, and it will follow up. Probably zip tie it back to the hard line there. Now obviously the turbo is going to be sitting right here, and it gets extraordinarily hot, so I like to get some of this oh, heat sleeving, I suppose, for hoses. It's got like a sort of fabric, fiberglassy sleeve to it. Just helps protect the line. I've had friends with turbo cars, their power steering lines burn through and actually cause small fire here, so it's definitely a good idea to try and insulate the return line for the power steering, because it just goes so close to that exhaust housing on the turbo. So what I'll do is I'll throw a bit of this heat sleeving over and run this one and I'll give you an update once this hose is done. Alrighty, got that return part from the cooler up to the reservoir done. You can see here where that heat sleeving is that I pushed over. It goes all the way down to just before it goes in the end tank, around the end tank of the radiator. Now I stopped it there because it's probably going to get too thick to fit in that little void down there. But with the turbo up here that's more than enough sleeving. I just put some zip ties around the the high pressure line for the power steering. It being a hard line, it holds in there good. And I also utilised the front bolt on the, the sway bar mount there and just took the the rubber bit off the P clamp because it's already got the heat sleeve on there, so that's more than enough insulation. And it would have been too small the clamp if I'd have left the rubber on there, so yeah, used a P-clamp down there just to hold it in. It seems to work in there just nice, real nice. I'm real happy with it. It'll poke in around the end of the end tank, like I said. If it'll focus, and, and then it'll just come up into the oil cooler. Pretty easy stuff. What I will do is I'll just put that radiator and aircon condenser back in there, and we'll have a look at this finished product. Okay, guys. Radiator and aircon condenser back in. Just throw a couple of zip ties on to tie everything back. And all these hoses move in and out, no worries. Doesn't get pinched under the end of the radiator tanks. So, yeah, pretty stoked to see what take a lot on. Oh, that's better. So, yeah, you can have a look. It all fits in there really well. I'm real happy with it, actually. Also, plenty of room. Get that light right. You can see the hose down the bottom there. Nothing rubs, all the P-clamps are holding everything back. So all in all, real happy with that whole installation. I think it's, I think it's going to work well. Okay guys, that'll do for this episode, putting the oil coolers in the SS. Um, I'm off actually, I'm off taking the kids for a ride. I'm all loaded, you know, trying to get that perfect balance between working on my cars and spending time with the family. So... If you like what you've seen in this episode, hit that thumbs up. Any comments, feel free to throw them in there. Uh, don't, don't ever feel like your questions will be too too simple or too silly or anything like that. There's no, There'll be no negativity on this channel. I'll try my best to answer every question just to try and help you guys learn anything you need to know. I'm happy to pass it on. Uh, also, if you want to see more, subscribe, of course, and hit the bell if you want to be told or notified when my next videos are out. Now talking about the next video, we will start the SS up. 
you know, there's going to be a few little odd jobs first before we actually get to it starting up. You know, you've got to put the exhaust in and finish up the wiring and belts and hoses and all that sort of fun stuff. So the next video will be quite interesting, but I actually think the SS will sound pretty good. It's a pretty aggressive cam that we put in that motor and, you know, I think it'll be a good video. It'll be, it'll be good to get it going, that's for sure. It'll definitely motivate me more to put that turbo kit on real quick. So, yeah, there might actually be another midweek episode or maybe next weekend we'll do an episode on the tunner as well i've got some parts coming for the tunner so we might throw that in there as well and yeah so i'm probably not going to edit this video until i get back tomorrow so i hope you've had a good weekend and i hope you have a good week and uh, we'll catch you next week